The Daily Code Snippet. CSS was also developed at CERN, but this time by Hakon Wim Lee in 1994. At this point, the web was starting to be used as an electronic publishing platform. However, there was no built in way to style documents as part of the HTML. Hakon had previously worked on presentations at the MIT Media Laboratory and saw a gap that needed to be filled. Tim Berners Lee had considered styling back in the early 90s and always intended for the document structure to be separate from the styling. He had developed a simple style sheet but did not publish the syntax he used. He believed that each browser should determine how best to display pages to users. Earlier in 1992, Payway had developed a browser called Viola that had its own style sheet language. However, subsequent browsers offered little to no options with regards to styling, and soon users were complaining that they had little influence over the style of their pages. Hakon published the first draft of his cascading HTML style sheets proposal days before Mark Andreessen was set to announce the availability of his new browser, Netscape Navigator. The first beta release of Mozilla. Also being released was Argo by Bert Boss, a browser that was intended for a project to make the internet accessible to scholars of the humanities. It was to be a customizable browser with style sheets, and he collaborated with Hakon. One of the features of the style language for Argo was that it needed to be general enough to apply to additional markup languages other than HTML. So ultimately, the HTML was dropped from the name and it became Cascading Style Sheets. Hakon's CSS was not the only proposed style language. There were competing proposals, including the version from Payway. However, it had a distinct feature. It took into account the capabilities of the display device and the browser. The reader and author could not, on their own, determine the style of the document. In April 1995, Bert and Hakon presented CSS again with the Argo browser and the Arena browser by Dave Raggett. The author reader balance continued to be debated. At the end of 1995, the W3C set up an editorial review board to ratify future HTML standards, and CSS standards were included as well. By 1997, CSS had its own working group to address features beyond CSS1, and CSS2 was released. In 1998. After this, browser support drove CSS development. The first commercial browser to support CSS was Microsoft's Internet Explorer 3, 1996. Then Netscape Navigator 4 adopted style sheets. Opera 3.5 by g e a r i v e r o y followed in 1998. Opera boasted it could fit on a floppy. Hakon was impressed and joined the Norwegian company as CTO. Opera's browser was used primarily on mobile phones, and this freed the web from the desktop. It was increasing competition that led to Netscape to respond by releasing its source code for its browser. So, this is why Mozilla Firefox today is an open source browser. This allowed anyone to make improvements on its browser, including the implementation of CSS to specification. Apple released Safari in 2003 when Microsoft stopped support for Mac by Internet Explorer. Cross browser compatibility means that web designers have to spend time to make sure their design displays comparably on all the different devices and browsers out there. This need is a result of this early competition between companies, their browsers, and implementation of web standards. Support for web fonts began with CSS2 with the ability to embed fonts by providing the font with a style sheet. It was only supported by IE in its initial release. At the time, only a few fonts had a copyright that allowed distribution on the web. Microsoft and Monotype developed a font format called EOT, embedded OpenType, which contained the URL inside the font. This limited the use of the font with that document. It was a proprietary Microsoft format. By 2008, more designers were allowing their fonts to be released for free on the web, and Hakon lobbied that browsers support them TrueType and OpenType fonts. BERT also convinced Microsoft to open up EOT, and it was eventually released under a royalty free license. But there was pushback to implement EOT because it used a different compression algorithm than the one more widely used. This pressured the W3C to release another format called 
W-O-F-F. So if you're wondering why you have to load so many types of font files when embedding a font, this is why. TTF, OTF, EOT, W-O-F-F. What is more popular now is the use of web-based font services such as Adobe Typekit, Font Squirrel, Google Fonts, and many foundries are doing the same. Presented by Designers Learn Code.